Kunda Sarwaranabu to hold me. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, 22nd of May 2018. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Members, Council acknowledges that we are meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land. We acknowledge they are of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city was six squares and surrounding built of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prospect deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Members, Private Errol Nowak, 5th Battalion, Royal Australian Regiment, was one of the first Australians called up for national service in Vietnam War 1965. And this week, in 1966, Errol became the first national serviceman to be killed in Vietnam War. Private Nowak was born in North Adelaide. We remember Errol's sacrifice and stand in silence in memory of all of those who gave their lives in defence of their country, at sea and on land and in the air. Members, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Members, welcome to the City of Adelaide Council Chamber, Tuesday the 22nd of uh, May 2018. Thank you, CEO. Uh, can I please welcome Mayor Sam Johnson from Port Augusta, who's joined us. Ladies and gentlemen the gallery, welcome. Uh, members, apologies and leave of absence, which is item five on your agendas. Uh, we have an apology from uh, Councillor Antic and from Deputy Lord Mayor Sandy Vershaw. Councillor Abiyad and Councillor Slama will be joining us in due course throughout this meeting. Members, your last meeting was held on the 8th of May 2018. Uh, the minutes of that meeting have been distributed to you. Can I please have a mover to adopt those minutes in absence of any questions about them? Moved by Councillor Martin, seconded by Councillor Moran. Do I have any questions about the minutes, members? I don't, so I'll put those before you. Those in favour? Those against? Carried. So, members, we carry the minutes of the meeting held on the 8th of May 2018. Members, item 7, which is public forums and deputations, uh, we have nil. So, I will take you directly to item 8 on your agendas, of which we, which is petitions, of which you have received, members, a petition regarding on street trial in North Adelaide. It's page 4 of your papers. I will require a member to move so that that petition can be accepted. Moved by Councillor Moran and seconded by Councillor Clearahan. I'll put that before you. Those in favour? Those against? Carried. Thank you, members. We have carried the petition. Uh, members, the Reconciliation Committee uh, met this afternoon and has now brought a matter before you 
which I draw your attention to your papers. Now, members, this is the Adelaide City Council Reconciliation Committee uh, stretch wrap. CEO, would you like a team member to speak to this matter briefly before I put it before the members? Would that be appropriate? Three year old minute. It depends whether the council would benefit from doing so. Sean McMurray is, is in the in the gallery. If he wants to come forward, perhaps could assist us. Our Associate Director Sean McMurray, given that the meeting was only held this afternoon, Sean, a brief preamble would be probably in order, uh, and then I might ask the members to direct any questions your way, should they have any, and then I will look to the floor. So, Associate Director Sean McNamara, welcome and thank you. Thanks, Lord Mayor, and, uh, and through you, um, members, just a, a reminder of the, uh, the extensive consultation process that's been utilised to develop the, um, the Stretch Reconciliation Action Plan uh, before you were commenced uh, in September of 2017, um, uh, with engagement with both the Reconciliation Committee and Council uh, in September. Um, from there, uh, my team consulted widely across the organisation to help develop uh, a meaningful list of, uh, of reconciliation action plan items uh, and to ensure that they were appropriately um, uh, funded in, uh, in next year's budget and beyond. Uh, that occurred throughout October 2017. From there, uh, we commenced consultation firstly specifically with, um, uh, with Ghana uh, and also more broadly with, uh, with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander uh, community. Uh, and also simultaneous to that, uh, conducted consultation um, on USA Adelaide with the broader community. Uh, this was brought, uh, the information from those engagement uh, processes was brought to the Reconciliation Committee and to Council um, in November and December of last year. Uh, and from there, the team built the stretch wrap, uh, which was brought again before the Reconciliation Committee and Council in February um, of this year. The next step from there was to, uh, to take the document to Reconciliation Australia for consultation and endorsement. Uh, and pleased to say that was received uh, just recently uh, and earlier today, as, uh, as the Lord Mayor indicated, we were able to take the Stretch Reconciliation Action Plan to the Reconciliation Committee. Uh, we're recommending it to you tonight for final endorsement. Sean, can I make a comment, if I may, please, just for clarification for the members? So the Stretch Wrap was distributed to the members last Friday. Uh, it was debated uh, by the Reconciliation Committee at length this afternoon. I understand there were no changes to the document made from last Friday to today, is that correct? Through you, Lord Mayor, yes, that's correct. Okay, and members, uh, subsequent to that, of course, the recommendation has been distributed to you. Do you have that on your tables, members? That's the recommendation. Before I look to you, members, can I just please thank our team, and most particularly Nicole Gollan and the team, um, the stretch wrap is uh, 50 individual actions uh, laid out in a manner which is very clearly discernible, very clearly measurable and very clearly doable. And I must say it received enthusiastic support from the Reconciliation Committee this afternoon and I'm sure it will from yourselves also. So members, I'm in your hands. Councillor Clarehan, you are? You're moving as printed. Thank you. Can I have a seconder? Councillor Hender, would you like to discuss the matter, Councillor Clarehan? I need to say, Lord Mayor, that um, the um, plan is based on the core, in, core ingredients of respect, relationships and opportunities, and the actions reflect each of those core values or ingredients. And also to remind councillors that the City of Adelaide, I believe, was the first council in Australia to develop a reconciliation action plan. So uh, we need to stand proud of the fact that we have been working at it for a long time. I also wanted to mention also that um, Reconciliation Australia acknowledges the City of Adelaide as having a fantastic model of consultation uh, with its local communities in the preparation of this particular plan and in fact holds up our template to other councils around Australia uh, as, a, as a fantastic way of developing their uh, reconciliation plans. And also, Lord Mayor, I'd just like to acknowledge the fantastic work of our administration, Nicole Golan. Um, and Cara Mada and Sean McNamara uh, and team and, uh, and also those members of the Reconciliation uh, Committee as well. 
uh, who do a great job uh, and they don't receive any payment for their attendance at all. So I'd like to acknowledge that. Thank you, Councillor Kemp. And of course, this being a whole of council endeavour also. So all of our various departments across the corporation are involved and put forward their own goals for the stretch wrap. Councillor Hender, you seconded the matter? Nothing to add, Lord Burke, except here, here. Yeah. Members, I'll look to you. Is there any queries, questions or debate? Councillor Clareham, back to you. Sure, Members, I put this matter before your consideration. Those in favour? Those against? We carry the item. Thank you and congratulations. I think there's someone in the gallery taking a very deep sigh of uh, deep breath there, the CEO. Uh, well done, team. A very good piece of work. Um, members, our next item is the presiding member's report, which is item 10.1. Um, and members, it's my pleasure to welcome Tracy Dorber, the City of Adelaide's new Associate Director of Finance. Um, and since my last report to Council, uh, the Lady Meris and I have attended Anzac Day Dawn Service, the Light Horse Commemoration, Anzac Day Parade, uh, and the service at the Cross of Sacrifice in uh, Pennington Gardens. And I think it was being uh, 1918, 2018, so to speak, it was an extraordinarily well supported Anzac Day this year, 2018, a very poignant. In recent weeks, I've hosted four community engagement sessions regarding the future development, along with many other fellow elected members. And I thank you for your attendance, most particularly Councillors Moran, Clarahan, Wilkinson, and Martin, uh, for the development, future development possibilities of 88 O'Connell Street, with the fifth session being held this Thursday in Park 10 at the Adelaide University Sporting Hub building at 5.30 p.m. These, attended, these sessions have been extremely well attended by um, our residential, commercial and property owning communities. I'm also, uh, I also proudly hosted the Heritage Community Forum with special guest Donovan Ripkema at the Adelaide Town Hall with 130 attendees, as well as hosted a Lord Mayor Business Roundtable uh, with the digital and creative sectors of our local business community, whereby we learnt a lot more about the challenges they, and the opportunities they are facing, and also the opportunity that 10 Gigabit Adelaide is affording to these growing businesses. And I thank Councillor Abiyad for his continuous support in the digital space. I addressed the South East City Business Support Program launch event, uh, the latest in a number of events throughout the city, highlighting what council offers to our businesses to help them thrive and grow. Thank you to our economic development team for the work they're doing. I've also recently hosted two of my regular forums for residents and precinct groups and attended the recent Metropolitan Local Government Group meeting at LGA House on Frome Street. I gave a keynote address at the Property Funds of Australia National Conference held this year in the City of Adelaide. Um, and the attendees of that conference were representing $120 billion of commercial property under management throughout Australia. And I must say, members, again, the message with regards to 10 gigabit Adelaide and what that will do for the competitiveness of commercial property in the City of Adelaide was indeed received extremely well. Um, I attended with the Lady Mayoress the Property Council's Gala Ball and Award Ceremony. Councillor Malani was there. And uh, also the Property Business of the Year Award, South Australia branch of Global Engineering and Infrastructure Advisory Company, Oricon, who won that award at the PCA, PCA event on that night. And our CEO was there with a the table of our senior executives. I also opened a conference to attract a major choral event to Adelaide as part of our UNESCO City of Music program and gave a speech about the importance of collaborative partnerships to the Carbon Neutral Cities Alliance Communications Network. I gave thanks on behalf of uh, Council to our city's many volunteers at the National Volunteers Week celebration uh, yesterday in Victoria Square, Tartan Younger, which was hosted by Volunteering South Australia and Northern Territory. I've attended the Hutt Street Working Party's first meeting at the Box, F Box Factory Community Centre and the opening of the newly redeveloped Park 19 play space, otherwise known as Mushroom Park, where I was uh, joined by Minister Stefan Canol. Uh, this significant investment, I must say, members, for those who have yet to seen it, and Councillor Wilkinson was there and Councillor Abiyad was there, is a terrific family-friendly play space with lighting, courts, barbecue areas, dog park, uh, walking and cycling infrastructure, and if you have not already seen it, it is wonderful and it is being very widely supported by our community. 
Marshmallow Park. Thank you, CEO. Not, oh, my notes say Mushroom Park. How did a mushroom become a marshmallow become a mushroom CEO? I had the great honour to host the Commonwealth Games Athletes Welcome Home Reception here at Adelaide Town Hall and of course a public celebration on Rundle Mall where I congratulated our star athletes on their outstanding success on the Gold Coast. I have attended many community events including the India Day celebration in Rundle Mall and I believe Councillor Milani was also there, the North Adelaide Precinct Association Community Cars event in North Adelaide, which is attended by some two and a half to 3,000 people, I think, which is an extraordinary turnout. Also, the opening of the University of South Australia's Pridham Hall in the West End and accepted an invitation to have morning tea with a group of about 100 East End residents uh, in uh, amongst their residences. Uh, the Lady Mayoress and I attended the National Domestic Violence Vigil in Elder Park and an open day at the City of Adelaide Clippership to mark 154th anniversary of this launch with Councillor Wilkinson. We also attended the opening of the first session of the 54th South Australian Parliament, which was followed by a reception at Government House. Recently hosted a civic reception for the Order of Australia Association Conference in Adelaide, and Lady Mayoress and I attended the South Australian Croquet Club Centenary in the South Park Lands. Members, I'm sure many of you have attended History Festival events and uh, we attended the launch of such event and also the unveiling, again with Councillor Wilkinson, of the Colonel Light Trig Point A brass plaque on the corner of West Terrace and North Terrace just out the front of the Newmarket Hotel. And also we hosted here, joined by many fellow elected members, Colonel William Light's birthday anniversary celebrations here in the Council Chamber and the Queen Adelaide Room. The Lady Marius was pleased to attend the visit of the Hellenic Presidential Guard, the uh, 76th anniversary of the Coral Sea commemorations and the 50th anniversary of the commemorative service of the battles of fire support bases Coral and Balmoral in Vietnam. 2018 is indeed a very special year for the Vietnam War in terms of its commemoration. Uh, Lady Marius was also pleased to provide an official welcome to Adelaide for visiting Japanese Sensei for the Japanese Karate Federation Australia National Seminar and Tournament and also attended a reception to mark the 25th anniversary of the South Australia and Okiyama sister state relationship. Lady Maris was asked to speak at several events. As patron, she opened the Mosh Art Exhibition, which is murder uh, against suicide harm uh, and raised $8,000, I understand, for that endeavour on that evening, which was a charity event. Uh, this month was rounded out by History Festival, which was a Her Story event here at Adelaide Town Hall in the Queen Adelaide Room. So indeed, members, as always, it's been a busy month. Can I please have a member move that that report be adopted? Moved by Councillor Clarehan, seconded by Councillor Corbell Moore. All those in favour? Those against? We carry that presiding member's report with thanks, members. So members, I now look to you, which is item 11.1, .1, which is reports from council members. Before I seek a mover, could I, would any members like to speak to their individual council members' report? Councillor Martin. Um, yes, Lord Mayor. Um, if I may make a report with regard to a community committee, I attended last week a quarterly meeting of the Adelaide Airport Consultative Committee as a representative of the City of Adelaide, Adelaide and there were some matters which I believe should be reported to council. Uh, these matters were discussed in an open forum. Uh, they included that there were, uh, again, almost 1,000 aircraft movements during the 11 p.m. to 6 a.m. curfew uh, over North Adelaide and reported to the end of March. The new airport hotel will be completed by August. With the demolition of the international terminal, negotiations are underway with regard to an expansion of the existing terminal and a major development plan is likely to be submitted in the near future for an upgrade to the Harbour Town Shopping Town complex, believed to be within the range of 25 to $30 million. Thank you, Councillor Martin, for the update. Members, would any other members like to speak to their individual members' report? In absence of, I'll look for a mover, please. Councillor Corbell moore seconded by Councillor Wilkinson. No debate, so I'll put that directly before you. Those in favour, those against, and we carry. Thank you, members. So that carries item 11.1. .1. Uh, members, you have a report to approve, which is item 12.1, which you debated at length. 
uh, and very considerately at committee last week. This is 12.1 Smart Parking Fee Option, page 12, a report to approve. Moved by Councillor Moran. Moving is printed, Councillor Moran. Yes. Seconded by Councillor Corbell Moore. Councillor Moran, do you wish to speak to the matter? I do not. Councillor, Councillor Corbell Moore, do you wish to speak to the matter? Um, just briefly, Lord Mayor, um, I, like, we did discuss this at length at committee, so we don't really need to go over it again. But we do think to acknowledge the hard work of the administration and how great it's going to be for the city, all the data we're going to get and how much we can improve what we're already doing. Um, there was just one point which I wanted to make. I requested for some information from the administration about the option of possibly um, providing the one-off option at a 30-minute interval in addition to the 15-minute interval. And I just would request for somebody to provide some guidance around that because I didn't see any of that information and data provided in our notes. Thank you, Councillor Corbyn. Well, I'll take that as a question. CEO, would you care to make a comment regarding that? Yeah, three a little bit. I do actually recall you saying that at the workshop, um, and that's certainly something that we can look into. Perhaps, Vanessa, you can expand on that for us. Um, yes, through you, Lord Mayor, we're, we'd be happy to take that as an undertaking and bring that information back to Council. Thank you. That's all. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Abiyad, um, you had your hand up earlier. Would you wish to speak to this matter? Um, I just want to take a minute. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Martin. Uh, yes, Lord Mayor, a couple of questions. Uh, the recommendation leaves to the administration uh, the decision on the number of times individuals can access the extend stay facility. What is the administration's position on that? Is it once in a life, once in a month, once in a week? See you. Thanks, Mr. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, it's once in a parking session. So that would allow someone to do it once a day or five times a week or? Once in a Through the Lord Mayor, it's once in a parking session. So if they've parked in a one hour park and they've, they've purchased one hour, they could extend their stay during that session once. Okay. If they then moved their car to a different location and parked and paid to park there, they could extend that stay. Oh, so, so it's, it's a it's parking right. session. Thank you very much. And the other thing is, why is the uh, the capacity to increase or decrease uh, delegated to the CEO and not placed in the hands of the elected body? I know it shows both, but it would seem, given that it's a new measure and maybe controversial, that um, it would be appropriate that in the first instance it comes to the elected body. CEO. Vanessa, could you respond yeah, to Sorry, through the Lord Mayor. Um, yes, the way the recommendation currently reads is that um, we would pay the fee set by council or council's delegate um, for the extended stay. Um, should, if council wished for that to just be set by council, that's fine. We could amend the recommendation. We'll take that as a comment, Councillor Martin. Uh, uh, I questions. Thank you, Councillor. Now, members, I don't see any further hands. I'm going back to the mover. It's Councillor Moran. Would you wish to sum up on the matter, Councillor Moran? I do. Um, I'd like um, to congratulate the councillors, who very rarely were congratulated, <laughs> in the um, constant and consistent push towards turning this juggernaut of part of the way we approach parking fines in the City of Adelaide, which is the same as um, the approach from any other local government instrumentality. For a long time, councillors have, have pointed out that this punitive way of keeping the turnover in the streets, which is very necessary, we all, we all understand that, um, has brought us a huge amount of um, unpopularity and a reluctance by people to come into the city because all our park, most of it, well in the city all of it is timed or, um, or paid for. Um, the councillors have stuck at it for over a decade now asking that our waiving policy be softened um, with 
a lot of resistance from the administration. Uh, no discredit to them. It was a huge windfall gain in, in money, and I can see why that that would be very attractive. But I, I really want to applaud the councillors who have stuck at it and, and ask that we, we be the first council that go to a user pays, copies New York, where the, the control of how much you pay is in the customers, the, our customers' hands. And instead of using a big stick like a fine that triples over a very short period of time, that people can swipe their cards and feed their meters and the turnover compulsion is left to the how we set the amount of um, the uh, paid parking. Um, and I think this is the first tiny step in going in that direction. It might be a tiny step, but it's a big step psychologically. We've got our parking fees down, and I really want to in here congratulate the staff. Um, we've got our parking fee amount down by 1.3 million, I think. We are far more compassionate in our waiving. We used to just seem to think everyone is a liar until they could prove it in a court. Now we take a much more compassionate and humane way of looking at that. And I think I haven't had a letter from somebody who's furious at being called a liar for a long time. And I was getting about three a week for, for a long time. So I really think this is a terrific, um, terrific direction that we've turned, turned our council into. We're not after money. We've all accepted that this is a, while well, very lucrative, is a bad way to get money. We can still charge for on-street parking, that's fine. Everybody expects that in a capital city. But from turning from fining to giving people the opportunity, of, if they can, to pay more money um, is a really good idea. The argument that that just favours the wealthy doesn't really hold much water because I know wealthy people that just pay their parking fines too. So it's always been about a bit, if you've got a bit more money, you can park for longer in the city, sadly. But I think this is a terrific initiative and the more may it roll on in the future. Thank you, uh, Councillor Moran, for congratulating uh, the members and the staff. Uh, members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against, we carry. Thank you very much, Councillor Moran. Members, I take you directly to item 12.2, uh, of which you've received, I believe, various correspondence from concerned city residents. This is item 12.2, Oban City Access Project, moved by Councillor Aviard, seconded by Councillor Hender. Councillor Aviard, you're moving as printed. Uh, yes. Report to note. Would you wish to speak to the matter? Lord Mayor, just, just briefly, I, I've got to say, I think um, the previous government hadn't really quite concluded the work um, to the level that we would have expected at that specific intersection. And there is a significant amount of um, outcry from the community with regards to the quality of work um, and the quality of finish with regards to landscaping in the area. And I, I'm really, um, you probably would have seen yourself uh, a couple of emails that have come through last week. Uh, with regards to this issue. So, uh, look, I think it's important that we keep that dialogue active. I think we engage with the state government uh, um, with regards to some things that we can do and achieve on the site, I think, to deliver a better community outcome. Uh, but look, for now, um, this, this is a matter for noting. I just wanted to, uh, um, to I guess, state the obvious in, uh, in my deliberations. Thank you, Councillor Abia. Uh, Councillor Hendon. <coughs> Again, I, I just wanted to uh, um, endorse the uh, decision that we've, well, it's not really a decision, is it? The, the um, action we've taken here, and particularly, I, I wanted to, in, I guess, acknowledge that the work that we have been doing in the last um, 18 months, two years, maybe three years, on beautifying our cities through the way we've been uh, undertaking plantings and other things have really started to really show. Um, benefits on our city streets. So I'm absolutely delighted that we're sort of taking control of this part of, of this part of the parklands. I do think the work that the state did was inadequate and I'm very glad that we are now um, retaking sort of control of it and I look forward to a much, much better outcome. So thank you particularly to um, to Beth for the work that's been done in the city and I'm sure um, in a few months' time we're going to get a much better look. Thanks. Thank you Councillor Hander. Councillor Wilkinson. Um, yes, yeah, just repeating what I said last time we spoke about this, uh, when we went and looked at this uh, project with the um, people from Dipti, and we were looking at the proximity of trees planted near the mouth um, at the uh, 
uh, where it joins up with Grenfell Street. And the trees were planted so far back from the side of the Obam Road, um, it actually goes up a metre before it goes, starts heading down, um, such that a, a hundred year old tree wouldn't even get to the edge of the road. So it would pro provide no canopy and no screening uh, of that huge um, expanse of bitumen. And the intention that we had was that the trees would be planted right next to the thing and even in the median so that we actually had a, a, um, a, a from road like canopy over the entrance. I was told by the Lord Mayor that, that, that we'd been said that that was not possible for OCK health and safety reasons, which I would seriously question because these are buses with little wheels on the side. How is that any different from any of the streets in Adelaide where there is a beautiful canopy of trees over the road? Why, why, why is it that um, uh, Dipti had taken its position that the trees had to be so far back so not even a twig could fall on the road in the path of the Obarn thing? I, I think it's uh, health and safety paranoia gone, gone mad. And I would really like us to look at planting big trees, like big elm trees or plane trees or gum trees, near things that actually form a lovely canopy. And the people that are living in the East End apartments, looking down upon it, who were quite vocal at the time, they didn't want to be looking at this huge expanse of bitumen where they currently looked at, previously looked at, at park. And, and if, you had, if we got the trees right next to the road and hiding it, then it would actually screen the view that all of those people in that um, big apartment building look down onto. Um, and, um, and I think there's also opportunity to revisit the trees in uh, Rundle Road itself, where it's a massive Kmart or a car park. I think the Kmart, Kmart uh, shopping centre car park is, looks comparable to that. It's a massive wide and it was designed obviously to maximise the number of car parks but most of the time they're not fully utilised and again I think we ought to re revisit getting some trees uh, in lieu of some of those car parks to actually get some canopy you know and, and shade protection and actually beautify that that section as well so I'll have further discussions with administration on that but I think we can do quite a lot better in this space. Thank you. Members, before I hand you back to the mover, Councillor Aviard, um, members, I, in my presiding member's report, I shared with you that I'd spent some time with a group of East End residents two weekends ago in Garden East. And I must say, I think we should acknowledge our East End residents because of their acceptance of the Oban project and their spirit of collaboration in order to get the best possible outcome of it. So, of course, members, we lived the Oban experience for some years. We wanted to make the best of it for our residents to green it and uh, quite clearly that the uh, landscaping efforts associated with its completion were inadequate. And this was of great concern as recently as two weeks ago uh, with the residential community of Garden East and the East End and they were very vocal about it when I was with them. And um, I also commend Beth Davidson Park and our Hort teams because they deliver and they really deliver. When it comes to the beautification of Adelaide and the greening of Adelaide, um, I think the track record is self-evident, uh, whether it's down North Terrace or through our parklands or many of our city streets, on-street trees, a whole raft of things, the potted program that we're rolling out across the city, um, and I have no doubt that they will improve the visual amenity of the mouth of the Oban Tunnel, um, and it'll be a quantifiable improvement. So, CEO, would you like to speak? Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor, just want to say that Council Administration met with Garden East representatives last Thursday to talk about the planting as well. So that's um, worked out real well. Thank you. So it's been a collaborative approach and it will be a much better result than what it currently is today. So thank you, members. Uh, thank you, Councillor Abia. I'll put this matter before you, members. Those in favour? Those against? We carry, and that means we've carried item 12.2, which takes us on to item 12.3 to note, which is a 17-18 quarter three revised forecast. Members, do you have any questions or queries regarding this matter? I will to remove it first. I've got Councillor Moran who had a hand up first, Councillor Martin second. Councillor Moran, would you like to speak to it? Uh, no, Councillor Martin, would you like to speak to it? Um, yes, I would, uh, Lord Mayor. Look, I am speaking in favour of it, though. Um, I must say there are elements which uh, will be disturbing to ratepayers. 
uh, not least, I, I noticed that the Western Entry Statement, which caused such uh, controversy, has now blown up the cost by 25% to uh, $1.224 million. But uh, having said that, my, um, my concern about this review is uh, the position it discloses insofar as our ability to carry out uh, the works program is concerned. Um, last financial year, 2016-17, we carried forward uh, more than $11 million in major works. That is to say, in 2016-17, we couldn't finish our commitments and we had to say we'll do that in 2017-18. So uh, this year we have been $11 million uh, $11 busy from last year. And this document here says that we will carry forward more than $20 million in works from 2017-18 to 2018-19. Um, now that figure's sure to grow. That's only at QF3. At QF4 it's likely to be a little higher. So that means that the budget that we're considering at this time for Capital Works is already committed to $20 million from this year being carried into next year, whatever the commitment is for 18-19 that we agree. Now the consequence is that this uh, this consumes considerable time for staff, it consumes considerable time for elected members and public expectations, and could, for example, if we didn't have that constant annual backlog of works, allow council to say, draw a line under it, and perhaps one year say, well look, instead of borrowing all this money for capital works, we'll borrow it for an asset, something that might be worth $20 million that would return an income of one or two million dollars a year. But instead, each year we play this game of we'll finish what we didn't finish last year, this year. Now, I, I know that there are good reasons for that, and I'm, I'm sure that the administration will tell me that we're dependent on the capital works programs and the state government schedules and other party schedules and so on. But there is enough of a pattern there to see that we cannot complete in any given year the capital works that we set up to do. And so we need to stop, and my hope is that the administration, administration will review the process with a view to perhaps rescheduling works in such a way that we can actually meet our commitments or draw a line under it and then make a really bold decision about some other alternative. That might be, as I suggested, something like a uh, a capital purchase that will return an income while we actually get through the business of clearing the backlog. Thank you. Uh, Council Martin, members, you're debating item 12.3, our Q3 revised forecast. Do I have any further debate? Council Moran, back to you. Members, I put this matter to note before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 12.3, which takes us on to 12.4, which is your quarterly council decision update to note relatively procedural matter. Members, I look to you. Can I have a move, please? Councillor Hender, seconded by Councillor Clarahan. Councillor Hender, no debate. Councillor Clarahan. Members, any questions or queries? Back to you, Councillor Hender. Summed up, members, I put this matter before you. Those in favour? Those against? We carry item 12.4. Now, members, I'm going to take you to item 12.5, which Effectively, I will require a procedural motion based upon the recommendation, and then I will call for a nomination for a replacement. Um, because Councillor Corbell Moore, thank you for your service to the board, but I understand they changed the meeting dates and that was very difficult for you to attend. So we need to refill that position. So can I look for a procedural motion, please, members? Moved by Councillor Clarahan, seconded by Councillor Moran. I'll put the procedural motion before you first. Those in favour? Those against? We carry. Now I look to the floor members. Do I have a member who would like to nominate another member for a uh, a board position with a non-pecuniary pecuniary interest? So you can all stay in the chamber. Councillor Moran. Uh, uh, Lord Mayor, Councillor Slama has asked me to nominate him. I presume that can be done in Councillor Slama's absence. Yes, it can. I'm looking for procedural advice, and yes, with enthusiastic response to my right. So, 
Do we have any further nominees? Councillor Maloney? Well, I'm assuming this is actually really only putting someone for a couple of months. Because we're going to caretaker and then, you know, we have a hiatus and what will happen next. Why do we? Why, I believe that personally. <laughs> well, if he's nominated and he's happy to do it for two months, there's a request has been made. It's point taken, Councillor Maloney. Understand? So, members, I presume I'm not going to have any further nominations. So, and Councillor Slama in absentia. Uh, I will then need a mover, please, to nominate Councillor Slama. Moved by Councillor Corbell Moore, seconded by. Oh, you've nominated him. I need someone to move him. Yes, so I'm being I'm being strictly procedural here. Moved by seconded by Councillor Clarehan. So I put this matter before you, members. Those in favour. Those against, carried, albeit a short tenure. Thank you, members. Uh, members, item 12.6, which is the Adelaide Central Market Authority Strategic Plan 2018 to 2022, whereby you've had presentations in committee environments to approve. First hand up was Councillor Martin. <coughs> Moving is printed to approve. Is that correct, Councillor Martin? Seconded by Councillor Hender. Councillor Martin, do you wish to debate the matter? Uh, Councillor Hender, do you wish to debate the matter? <laughs> Members, I look to you. Any debate, queries, questions? No, I'm now working in reverse. Councillor Hender, you've reserved your right. Do you wish to speak to the matter? Councillor Martin, back to you. Yes, Members, I put the matter before you for your consideration. Those in favour? Those against, we carry item 12.6, the Adelaide Central Market Authority Strategic Plan for the next four years. Members, emerging key risks, there are nil. There's never any risk in the City of Adelaide CEO. We will go to questions on notice 13.1. Councillor Martin, question on notice regarding Bolton Street Works, to which Councillor Martin, would you like to read your question and I will read you an answer. I'm happy to take this record. Thank you. Would you like me to read you the answer, Councillor Martin? I'm happy to accept that as read as well. Members, you've all received a copy of, I presume? Members, do you have, a, do you have the answer to the question to which Councillor Martin has asked? You do. If members of the gallery or the media would like a copy of that, they may ask and it will duly be distributed. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Members, I now go to item 15.1, which is, and CEO, may I just bring this to your attention, please, uh, before I do put this before Councillor Moran. Uh, the, I would suggest the slightly confusing title, which refers to membership of the, C, of the uh, LGA, whereby the motion itself talks about a review or a report associated with the membership of the LGA. I would suggest that's a subtle but important difference. Councillor Moran, your motion. Thank you. Thank you for calling that the Belt Mayor. Um, look, I'll move as printed that we undertake a review of Council's membership of the Local Government Association of South Australia, which will of course ensure with a report back to Council. Um, I I will look for a seconder to get, for you to continue your debate. Seconded by Councillor Abbey. The floor is yours, Councillor Moran. I just want to remind um, people, I can't need reminding, that this is separate from the debate. Um, not separate, but this is a motion asking for a review of our membership. My personal views are quite well known to all of you and have been known for a long time. Um, and my motives behind moving um, a motion like this, you may question. but. One should re review a membership if, of an organisation, especially a very political one such as the LGA, regularly. Um, and I think we're well overdue for a review. Now, I think we, I'm hoping that the review underlines what I think. Um, but it may well, as talking to Natasha last night, um, so the, the other night, go the other way, point out values of being a member of the LGA that I'm unaware of. I don't think so, but still. Um, so I'll ask you to put your personal opinions aside whether you want to leave the LGA or you're a great supporter of the LGA and support a review of our membership. Thank you, Councillor Moran. And this matter was seconded by Councillor Aviar. Do you wish to speak to it? Reserving your right. Reserving your right. And we, Councillor Hendon. 
Um, can I just ask what the outcome of, of this will be? It will be a report back to, to Council with the benefits and the... Yeah. Yep. Okay, on that basis, I can put a support. So, yeah, that's correct. Can you confirm yeah, that? Yeah, it's very well. That's exactly what we'll do. We'll provide a balanced report back to you um, with all the facts. Thank you, Councillor Hander. Councillor Milani, followed by Councillor Clarehan. Councillor Milani, floor is yours. Thank you. Look, I, um, I fully respect where Councillor Moran is coming from, um, and I believe this is about some particular issues. But my view is I, I, I won't support this because I don't support um, a review if you actually have no intent of reviewing your membership to this organisation, and I don't believe we should be considering a membership of this organisation. Therefore, why do a review? In fact, the good news is that yesterday, the, um, a report came out by UHY Haynes um, that reviewed the value of the LGA membership for um, all councils across South Australia. Now, the report said that each council actually gets a benefit of $2 million um, from their membership of the LGA. Now, you could argue and debate some of the nuances of that, but it actually goes through every one of the 50 services that the LGA offers and it actually goes through and says how a council can realise the, the value of a membership from the LGA. Um, so to be honest, the, the good news is the piece of work that we're about to invest time, energy and money in has been done for us. Um, the, in particular, the LGA also just announced that they're going to call a special um, general meeting uh, for councils to give input on rate capping. So let's just park that aside because that process is about to come um, and we'll have an opportunity to contribute to that conversation. Um, I believe, and, and I commend the, um, the Lord Mayor and the CEO have done a lot of work um, to build the relationship with the LGA in the recent times and we've got a representative um, on the executive. Um, I don't think we need to review anything. I, need to, I think we need to just take the conversation off the table. We remain a member. We're always going to remain a member. That's how you make change. You make change by being a member. We don't need to review something we ever anticipate changing. Thank you, Councillor Mullaney. Councillor Wilkinson. Oh, sorry, my you. mistake, Councillor Wilkinson. I'll just ask you to... Um, uh, bear with me, Councillor Clarehan. You did have your hand up. I apologise. The floor is yours, Councillor. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I take on board Councillor Milani's commentary, and in response to that, I would actually like to move an amendment to this motion that says that um, administration provide a report to Council on the value proposition of belonging to the local government association. And I'd seek a seconder because I think the difference between review and report is very different. Because I think if we use the word review, we question um, the legitimacy of be, be, being a member. If we ask for a report, we are we would be informed of the value proposition of being a member of the LGA. And I think they're two very different things. Lord Mayor, I have to bury my motion. I don't see the difference, so I'm happy to um, take that as a change of word. Thank you. So I'm going to look to you. So Councillor Clarehan, you'd be clearly happy that Councillor Moran would vary that from I, I, review uh, could to I speak report. To it, Lord Mayor? I'll just seek. Now the second was Councillor Abiyad. Councillor Abiyad, are you comfortable to have the variation? You are. I'm going to look for general comfort from the floor. I'm seeing heads nodding. Thank you, members. Councillor Clarehan, you can continue to speak to the matter. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look. I have absolutely no question about our members being for, informed about the value of belonging to the LGA. As has been mentioned, I am uh, a representative on the board of the Local Government Association. Uh, there are over 20 members uh, on the board of the Local Government Association uh, and probably there are, I think I might be one of the only councillors, um, but there are many proxies who are on the LGA board who are councillors. And it is a very broad church, very broad representation of people who look at issues affecting local government. 
Now, my concern is in relation to um, some of the comments that have been made is around the issue of, of um, rate capping policy. The Local Government Association of South Australia has always had a policy of opposing rate capping. Local government only collects 4% of the national tax revenue. That is not a huge amount of revenue. And to have state government control its ability to raise revenue to provide the services and the facilities and the infrastructure that support our local communities is something that the board uh, and the LGA have never been able to accept. Councillor, can I remind you that you may want to hold those comments until the next item, which would be more relevant as opposed to this one. So indirectly, right. indirectly right. it is relevant. Okay, yeah. Lord Mayor, I shall just say that I fully support the members of this council being aware of the value that local government provides to the City of Adelaide. We have information about its value proposition generally and the local government, I understand, or our administration can work with the local government association administration to actually get the details of the value of, of this council being a member of LGA. I think it could be in the vicinity of two to three million dollars. We would be crazy to shoot ourselves in the foot by questioning our membership. However, very happy to support Councillor Moran's motion, which will bring a report back telling us what the value is of being a member. Thank you, Councillor Members. Do I have any further debate on this matter, Councillor Wilkinson? Uh, yeah, I don't think it hurts to um, sort of uh, uh, question these things, uh, you know, rather than just blindly sort of con continue on. And just when you look at sort of what's what's transpired in, you know, in recent times, obviously the LGA has been very outspoken about the rates capping issue, understandably. But you know, when 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 the state government was basically moving to emaciate local government by removing the community from planning completely, yeah. I personally felt that the local government let 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 the community down by not going to bat seriously well enough on, on, on that issue. I, I know they did some forums and workshops and stuff like that, but you know the, the difference between how, how much they've sort of pushed the issue about the rate capping compared to how they didn't push the issue about the community being removed from planning, which is most of the motivation for many, many people on local government. The reason why they're in local government is because of planning issues. But nothing affects communities and, and people at a local level more than planning and, and the last state government basically uh, just removed that so in a very undemocratic way in my view. So I'm, I'm happy to support the motion and uh, hopefully it gets back to the LGA so to look at look at their action and uh, realise that people don't need the membership just regardless of their performance. You can look to the presiding member, not to the media, Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, members, do we have any further debate on this item? Councillor Abiyad, you reserved your right. Members, I'm going to speak to this briefly before I um, uh, put you back to the mover, Councillor Moran. Uh, I support the report. Uh, quantification of value is probably an important due diligence process in any organisation. On that level, I do support it. Members, I will share with you that in 2014, uh, when I was elected as Lord Mayor and I engaged with uh, the local government association and most notably with many metropolitan and regional rural mayors and chairs as a consequence the first thing I heard was where the hell has Adelaide been? It's been absent and the, we've done a lot of hard work together to bring Adelaide back into local government and uh, whilst I do clearly uh, support quantification. I like as much as you would like to know what is that true value and can we measure it in dollar terms and maybe other uh, uh, less tangible terms. I'd like to know that. Yes, correct. But the LGA is a peak body and like accountants have a peak body, local governments have a peak body and it's an important uh, role that needs to be played. Whether it could be played better is up for debate but nonetheless peak bodies are important for effective government, in our case effective local government. So I do look forward to this report. CEO, would you be able to advise us the likely timing of this report coming back to members before I hand you back to Councillor Moran? About three or now, I would imagine, within the month. Yep. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Summing up, the floor is yours. Uh, yes. 
Um, thank you for um, uh, nearly debating the uh, topic. Um, I don't see much difference from what I intended um, in this. A review is a review of the benefits and the disbenefits. Um, I I have made my views very clear on the LGA. I don't think it performs any function that the City of Adelaide needs. Um, and I would need a lot of convincing by this report, but I am interested and I'm reminded to see what this report brings back. But in 23 years, I have seen the Local Government Association work well. And in the last two decades, I've, I've see, not seen that. When um, Wendy Campana was the head of it, um, it was a part of our daily life and our administrators' daily life. We could pick up the phone and speak to Wendy. Um, we got into a few trouble. If a councillor got into trouble, now it seems to me, and this is my perception, that it is a union for the administration. Um, I, can't, I cannot tell you how many phone calls I got today from very unhappy councillors and mayors who are members of the LGA and feel that the culture had become, has become politicised. It is clearly not serving, in their minds, anywhere near what it used to. Um, my long service in council has given it's one, one plus is that I have seen the changes. And I can tell you what, this is a shadow of the LGA as it used to be. And as for saying where have we been, we, we were right to feel repelled for a long time because our issues aren't their issues. We're, we're, we are under a separate act, the City of Adelaide Act, um, we have different um, views. The lack of interest that we show in going to the meeting shows that poor old Sue's had to be to every meeting for as long as I've known and nobody else wants to go. And that we don't take any time on the motions. They're basically just reflective of the government. Um, perhaps we're at fault too, that we haven't been more involved with the LGA. And perhaps Sue's right, I'm willing to be changed. But at the moment, my view is that it's a waste of time, it's a waste of money, it's politicised. It is about to go down the gurgler, and I don't want us to follow it. So we, it's important we review it now. I put this motion for a report before you. Members, those in favour? Those against? Motion carried. Thank you, members. Members, the next item is item 15.2. Council Moran, motion notice regarding council rate increases, page 76 of your papers. Council Moran, the floor is yours. Yes, I've moved that the Council supports the State's Government proposal to ensure any increases in Council rates are reasonable and to request the Lord, Lord Mayor liaise with the State Government on Council's behalf regarding the development of legislation to restrict rate rises. Thank you, Councillor. I look for a seconder. Councillor Abiyad. Councillor Moran, back to you. Now, this is a much softened version of what I wanted to move, but it's a much more sensible motion and I thank the Administration <laughs> for it. Um, the, Rate capping was a core promise of this new government. They are going to do it in some form. That's, the ministers told us that. There's no use doing what the LGA said. No, no, we're against it. We're going to spend your rate payers' money. I don't know one rate payer that's not all for rate capping. So I don't know where they get the mandate to do that. Uh, they, they said every council did in 2016, and I believe they probably would if I was probably a delegate to the LGA and they said, hey, do you want rate caps? I said, no, absolutely not. Uh, time has marched on then, <clears throat> and I think <clears throat> that councils have been profligate in their spending as far as the rate powers are concerned, um, and it is an enormously popular move by this government that will go ahead. Now, whether you agree with rate cap or you don't agree with rate I hope you support this because we want a seat at that table. We don't want the hard, hard rate cap that we suspect is coming. We don't want the rural councils, as Sue's pointed out quite sensibly, that rely on their rates. It's not one size fits all, and nobody knows local government better than us. <clears throat> and funny enough, we seem to know it better than the LGA. So all I'm doing now, <clears throat> We have a friendly relationship with this new government, having endured 16 years of a very awful relationship. I don't want us to pick a battle by joining the LGA lot step in this, that we cannot win, we will not win, um, and then the door of friendly, friendship closes. I want a seat at that table. I want our expertise to be there. I support rate capping, but that's irrelevant. Rate capping is coming. 
so of some form. So let us get a seat at that table and influence the outcome so that some of our sister councils aren't damaged as badly as maybe an angry government will we'll clamp down on them. And make two, no two bones about it, the people out there are really angry with the increases in rates. Things like Burnside Council moving that it would, it would increase its commercial rates by 100% to bank that money in anticipation of a rate cap. What an outrageous thing to do. None of those businesses' profits have increased by 100%. No care of that. It was voted down, but the audacity of the council even thinking that that was possible. And then to move on to the the ingenuous behaviour of the Onka Paringa Council. We have never been, and as the head of the LGA said, the actions of the Onka Paringa Council have brought the LGA into the lowest, local government into the lowest um, level in public perception. She admits that. So let's quell the fire, accept that this government is going to look at our rate rises in some shape or form, and let's get a seat at that table. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Your second was Councillor Abia. Do you wish to speak to the matter, Councillor? I have a question. I uh, may reserve my right quickly. Just a question to Councillor Moran, if that's okay, just to clarify for the gallery of potentially elected members. Um, the first part of the motion that Council supports the State Government proposal to ensure any increase in Council rates are reasonable, you're referencing only the City of Adelaide Council rates, not all of Councils. Yeah, I don't think we have a say in all of councils. I think I'm comfortable to say anything in our city is reasonable, but that's I supported it on the basis because it references that council board man, and then it references council. So I'm assuming it's the city of Adelaide. Uh, Councillor, I, I must say, Councilman, I also interpreted your motion as inferred to be the city of Adelaide. I don't think we have an ability to influence the rates of other councils. Well, it's not our remit. I've talked to her son about that and I realised that he thought that. I didn't, I didn't feel it was any harm in us entering the broader debate. But if the council's uncomfortable about that, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to take the interpretation that you've taken. Uh, does that affect the second part? First of all, to make the start government behind the guardian of the government of legislation to restrict, restrict rate rises? No, not necessarily. So I, I think it's a matter whether the matter was kind of expressed or inferred. Uh, I took it as inferred that it would be City of Adelaide because it would be beyond our mandate to have any discussions about the rates yeah, by the councils. But well, uh, the minister may look at the wider implications, and that would be the minister's job. But um, yeah, our role is to I'm discuss. Yeah, I take your point that perhaps we a little bit previous for us to be commenting on other other people. But I think still our wisdom in explaining what rates do is very important. Understood, understood. And the discussion, um, Councillor Abiyad, does that sound fine? Yes, I reserve my right. You reserve your right. Okay, now, members, I've got uh, Councillor Malani, is that correct? Thanks, so, I've, I've got a couple of questions, if I may. Um, my question is around, um, oh, I take Councillor Malani's point, it's, it's happening, it's coming, so we want to sit at the table. My question is, have we got any plan to bring a report back to this council? We've not actually established the chamber view of our position on rate capping. Um, my first question is, um, do we have an intent to do that so that we, for example, if the LGA is um, creating a special um, general meeting where they're going to ask councils for its view, we now want a seat at the table with the state government. Do we have um, a mechanism in which we're going to form a position? Can I refer that to our CEO before I do, Councillor Maloney? Of course, there hasn't been a bill which has been put forth yet, and uh, at, which means the government hasn't fully articulated what their definition of rate capping would be. But um, CEO, can you add to that, please? Yep, through you, Lord Mayor. At this time, the calling of a special meeting has not been fully confirmed. It's been indicated there will be a special meeting called by the LGA. If and when a meeting is called, it will be necessary for this council to prepare for that and be clear in its position. So I would anticipate that we would report back to council prior to that meeting for a firm position on the particular topic being considered. Um, that has not occurred to date, as you know, um, and so that would be a process we would need to go through. May I, may I ask a subsequent question to that? Is, it, is the calling of a special 
general meeting by the LGA the only trigger. I mean, we could trigger, as, as Councillor Moran said, it's, there's, you know, there's a legislative process that's most likely to occur. Um, and, and there's a lot of, you know, you read about what Tasmania thinks about this and there's a question of rate capping, which personally I, I support, but there's also a question about, you know, state government interfering with the local government process. There's a whole lot of diversity around this topic. Are we going to have the discussion anyway irrelevant over the, it might not be just around the special general meeting of the LGA, it might just be in general to form our view. If, if we vote for tonight to get um, a seat at the table, what, what are we what are we going in to talk about? We don't know yet. Through you, Lord Mayor, just to be clear, there's two very different things we're talking about here. One is um, representing the City of Adelaide within the Local Government Association and their deliberations. The other is working with the State Government in accordance with this motion. So there are two two different things we, we need to consider. My, my question is, though, irrelevant of where we feed our feedback, what's the mechanism in which we're actually going to put a position together? We don't have one right now. See, I could I assist in that endeavour? Um, by virtue of this motion, Councillor Maloney, uh, it would probably assist that I could bring back to the Chamber where the government is in terms of their own due process, their own thinking, and their likely position with regards to rate capping in terms of how it's implemented. Then the Council could make an informed decision. So we, we don't know what we're, talk, we're debating yet. I, I, I agree with that would make sense. I guess I'm just I'm not um, my, my questions turned into a bit more of a uh, I, I guess a conversation now. But we don't have a position yet, and I think we need to get to one. With all due respect, this is the beginning of a position. So Patrick could not have a stream of consciousness and have, and have a debate. <laughs> Well, it's not ridiculous. I mean, there's a there's a step by step process as to how we should handle this. I would like Councilman, to make sure I think they're quite reasonable questions. I think I'd like to make sure we get the steps up. in the right order, uh, because right now we go to sit at the table. Yes, we bring back, and then we go back again. And I get that, but we we need to eventually draw a line in the same way. And it might be in support of. I'm not saying either way. Um, but I just I think we're just missing we're just jumping the gun to one little bit of it and then we, we we're not actually formulating a plan here. Council. I'm happy to support it, but I just flag that we need to create a formal position. May I assist you, Council? No, before we continue the debate, let me assist you, councillors, with uh, to further inform this process. I think what Council Moran is looking to achieve. If you look at over the last three years, councillors. Uh, you have provided your Lord Mayor with the imprimatur on many occasions, infrastructure and policy positions of council to go in and commence discussions which have then been brought back to this council chamber whereby you've made an informed decision. But it often did start, and 88 O'Connell Street would be a very good example, plus, plus, plus. So whereby it's then come back to council chamber and you've made an informed decision on your decision, on your position on that matter. I think that's what council Moran is looking to achieve, and it's quite reasonable in that regard. Uh, now I've got Councillor Hender. Uh, I mean, it may be what Councillor uh, Miranda is seeking to achieve, but it's not what her motion says, Lord yeah. Mayor. What her motion says is that um, that we support the state government, that we, that council supports the state government's proposal to ensure that any increases in council rates are reasonable in our council rates, only our council rates. So we are actually indicating that we support the idea that the state government has a role in interfering with our setting of council rates. And if we send you in with that, you don't come back with a report. You go back in. You you actually go in there saying this is our position. So uh, to um, as council as uh, council Moran says, this is the beginning of taking a position. It's actually the it's the it's not just the beginning of taking a position. It's a clear taking of a position. And I understand it's well, council Moran. She's quite right. right. This is a position. This is supporting rate capping or not supporting yeah. rate capping. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. quite right. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a position to go in and say we support rate capping and and that's why I can't support the motion. I, I don't support rate capping. I don't support it as a matter of principle. I don't support one level of government having a role in, in saying how another level of government can raise its revenue. Um, I, I understand that the state government have taken this to an election and they have a mandate. There's no doubt they have a mandate and it will happen and fair enough, that's that's the process. I don't think we necessarily have to therefore say, well, we, we support that, hands up for that. Um, obviously we have to work with them while they 
worked through their mandate, they were entitled to do it, they've, got, they've been to an election, they've won the election and they're entitled to do it. And I think we should engage with them while they support that. But I don't think we should, I, I personally can't support this because it's a supporting of rate capping and as a fundamental principle, I don't, I don't agree with that. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Clary. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, this is a really, what I thought was an incredibly confusing motion. But from what's just been said, you know, I was going to refer to it as a Trojan horse for council to vote against rate capping and go against the policy position of the local government. But it's become a transparent Trojan horse now because Councillor Moran has actually said that this is about rate capping. Now, <laughs> this is about whether we support or don't support rate capping. So we really know what the agenda is now. And I actually concur. Order. There is no agenda. Steve Matheson wrote that. Councillor Moran. A motion. I really object to that. It is unclear. What is it? It is clearly put. It's not confusing. Councillor Moran. Uh, and it is rate capping. Please no, enable Councillor Clary to continue. You, me, though, you just said it's about rate capping. And that's what the motion says. No, it doesn't. Doesn't. There's no Trojan horse here. Councillor Clarehan, the floor is yours. The members Thank are listening. You, Lord Please Mayor. continue. Thank you. Um, Lord Mayor, this is actually not quelling the fire. This is fanning the fire. The Local Government Association had support by its board, by its members, 50 of its members, to actually engage in a campaign to tell the community what the Local Government does and also what the impacts are if rate capping is imposed upon us by another level of government. And we've got it in New South Wales and there is evidence to show that rate capping will have a huge impact on our local communities. And it is a negative impact. It is not about a political party and the Local Government Association has been very, very careful in its campaign not to mention a political party, not to mention a politician. It has been about the evidence that has been presented on what rate capping will do to our communities. And I think that we need to take note of that evidence. And they have they have not politicised this issue. They have engaged in a campaign of informing our communities what a rate cap will mean. Now, this is not over and done with. 62% of people at the last election did not support the government. There is also the possibility that the upper house will not approve, will not support the, the government's rate capping policy. It is about a policy. It is not about political parties. Many of the people that are represented on the board would be government supporters, but they do not support the rate capping policy. And we need to accept that. The other important thing I think we need to look at is that Adelaide City Council is unique. We have, and I'd like a little bit extra, Lord Mayor, because I was interrupted. Councillor Moran, uh, I look for the general comfort of the room to extend. The other thing that we need to be really careful about... She had the majority. The other thing we need to be really careful about is patronising our fellow council, councils and regions because Adelaide City Council has other revenue a, a big revenue base that is not made up from rates. We have businesses, we have property portfolios and so the impact on us of any policy would be nothing compared to the impact on our poor regional and rural councils who are totally dependent on rate on rates. Now, the evidence says... Just a point of order, Mayor, this does not refer to us imposing the rate capping on other councils. Lord Mayor, Lord Mayor this motion is not clear. I believe it's a Trojan horse, a transparent Trojan horse, really, about rate capping, and I am speaking to that. I think we need to be very careful about what we would do to all the work that has been done across the state in opposing this particular policy. I think we need to actually revisit it and be very, very careful about what we would do to a campaign undertaken by the rest of local government in this state. 
It is a policy, it is not about politics. The same as the Local Government Association gave the last government a hard time for, for um, cost shifting. It was about a policy, it wasn't about politics. And I think we need to respect that and honour it and not see ourselves as one in, as in the same boat because we are not. We have a very different situation in this council. Members, do I have any further debate on this item? Councillor Martin. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, I am one of those people who might be persuaded to consider rate capping under some circumstances. <coughs> uh, the wording of this motion, though, is such that I, I would find it very difficult to support. Um, it, it imposes on us um, the obligation to support the state government in ensuring that the way in which we set rates are reasonable. And that's nonsensical. We've done that for the last four years. We've capped rates. We've said the rate in the dollar will never increase. So why are we need the state government support to determine our own policy? I've no idea. It's it's just nonsensical. And I'm surprised that Councillor Moran blames the administration for the wording. The second part requires the Lord Mayor to liaise with the state government on behalf of uh, council in regard to the development of a position. Uh, well. We, we don't know what the legislation looks like. I have no idea whether we're actually going to be supporting something that's 2%, 3%, 10%, whether in fact it's, it's applied through some sort of commission or there is a minister, whether by ministerial decree, whether there's an exemption when valuations are different in different places. I, it is asking us to determine how we approach this subject with absolutely no knowledge but a subscription to a political belief. And that's suicide, it's nuts. So I'd suggest to everyone here, the best possible position is to hold your fire, wait until we understand what the extent of the, of the problem is for, for us as a council and for local government generally, and then determine a position. Let's not go in with all guns blazing. It's a, it's a much more nuanced and subtle approach that we need. CEO, would like to make a comment, please, members. Um, just a point of clarification, if I can. The, the reference is to Steve Matheson. There we go. The reference is to Steve Matheson assisting Councillor Moran. Uh, are correct in that council administration often uh, enables improved wording to motions. Um, and all that was occurring in that case is quite normal. And um, um, Steve Matheson just simply assisted the councillor in the correct wording, just to be clear. Question, Councillor Marnie, yes. Well, Mayor, I think we potentially, um, and if this was the intent, to get a seat at the table to discuss the type of detail that Councillor Martin alluded to then. Can we, can I ask, would Councillor Martin consider withdrawing and we just clear up the wording that gives you the impetus to go and get the seat at the table and then to bring back the detail so that we can then go forward. I think we all agree that we need a seat at the table. <coughs> and Councillor Brown, I urge you maybe to get everyone on the same page that we you withdraw and we all vote on just that element, that we get the seat at the table so that the Lord Mayor can bring back the detail to us. Well, I am enabling you some... I don't know what table, by the way, you, but anyway... You have already good. spoken. That would be entirely up to Councillor Moran, which should she should, well, should just, wish to do that or not. I'm just wondering if that might get... Because... You. I'm happy to remove part one and just have the part two. Well, I think that would be a, a good idea. Well, I don't, but, but um, I'm happy to stay. I'm, well, now we're going to be a free-for-all. <laughs> I am happy. My motion initially that I had passed to the CEO said that this council supports the Liberal government's electoral promise for um, rate capping. Was that clear enough for you, Sue? Yeah, right. Yep, very clear. No Trojan horse there. But I succumbed to a much softer, more gentle, possibly more votable for how wrong we were there. <laughs> I, I support rate capping and I want this council to support it too because it's coming. If you want to, it, it's not coming down to it, so it's written there in black and white. I'm not, I'm not a, it's not a Trojan horse or a trick. Councillor Moran. Um, I'm happy to remove part one so because I don't think it damages 
it at all. That, that, that would leave request the Lord Mayor liaison the state government on council's behalf regarding the development of legislation to restrict rate rises. I'm yeah. happy with that. I do not want to go through the LGA. I want us to deal with the government. I think Thank the LGA you, is... Councillor Mann, I now need to look to your seconder for you to remove point A. Councillor Mann, Lord Mayor, I ask that it's taken in parts, so members that are not comfortable in supporting the first part that I have to support. I will accept that in parts, members. You will vote in this in two parts, part one and part two. Councillor Mann, you're happy with that outcome? <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Mann. That will satisfy your outcome too. So, now members, do I have any further debate? Second. Councillor Wilkinson, I'll come to you, Councillor Abia. Do you reserve your right? I'll come to you after Councillor um, Wilkinson. The discomfort I have is council acting or taking sort of political political sides. Um, um, it, there are various issues that affect council. Uh, I just spoke very strenuously about how the previous government in, interfered in the uh, planning space and, and basically removed the <coughs> uh, planning. So I you know, wasn't was happy about about that. Um, you know, this is also another aspect of. Uh, of uh, uh, local government apartment planning. So you know, I've, I've sort of I've taken a political position. Uh, I'm just philosophically uncomfortable with council taking a, a, a political position. I've, always, I've voted on both sides of government, uh, openly, state and federally. Um, and uh, I'm worried about the, uh, I'm worried about us to taking a sort of political position, but I'm very happy obviously for us to take an independent of the EGA, LGA type approach to road to the government. So I'm very supportive of the second part of the motion. Thank you. Councillor Wilkinson, now Cou Councillor Abbey, you reserved your right, the floor is yours. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, just a couple of things. I do, su I do support this motion. I'm going to explain why I support this motion. Um, look, first and foremost, I think if you read the first part, it says support the state government proposal to ensure any increase in our council rates is one of reasonable. Now, I'd like to think that every elected member that sits around this table would like to think that any increase to council rates to our elected members are reasonable. The only difference here is this council wants to decide its own fate. That's the difference. No one's disputing whether the reasonable rise or not the reasonable rise because I don't think any of us can go out to our rate payers and say, we're going to hit you with an unreasonable rise and that's acceptable. So a capping of some type, a discussion in our council, which the CEO mentioned and you mentioned, that we've been able to achieve over the last three years, <coughs> has been remarkable. But eight years ago, when I got on this council, the lingo around administration and this council chamber, I would probably exclude Councillor Moran in this, was it's very normal that we increase council rates every year by two or three percent um, on top of CPI sometimes if we had to. And there was a value proposition put to the elected members by the previous administration that said, if you don't do that, you lose millions over the years. You used to say that. That's the language that was being used. All right? You learn from the process. Then the difference between you and I, Councillor Martin, is I learned from my mistakes. Um, the, this is the exciting proposition here, uh, Lord Mayor, which I really think is really important to note. But the other thing this needs to bring to the attention of the state government is Substantial local government reform is required. This is the problem at the core. You have less than 30% of people turning out at local government elections. And, uh, and local government elections in different areas. City council is a bit more engaged than others, but even at the city council level board, man, at about 12, 13,000 business rate payers, only 2,000 vote at the election. So there's a lack of engagement from the community for many reasons. And that can yield odd results, sometimes wrong results. There has never been, ever, any innovation or entrepreneurship or breakthrough achieved through comfort. Never. Never. Not in any business where someone sits comfortable making money and they go, oh, cool, I've got this better idea to innovate, to be efficient, to come up with something a bit different. Discomfort causes innovation and entrepreneurship. That's when people start to think outside their square and maybe outside the box. And maybe this is where we play a role as a council that's capable of having 50% of its turnover coming from external sources, be it business, et cetera, where we could demonstrate and assist other councils in that, in that regard. But I'm also confident, Lord Mayor, that this state government and any state government will not sit by and watch the local community wither, shake, ropes falling apart and everything breaking apart. If I could seek another two minutes, Lord Mayor, extension. Members, I look to you. 
Yes, please proceed. Councilor. Thank you, members. Um, I can't see the state government board now, even if they were imposed a rate capping exercise that is an umbrella approach to everyone being the same, that would leave council areas behind and communities behind where the roads are not fixed, so they have a problem within their administration. This is a call to say the general public and every single constituent has had enough. They cannot keep taking on board the cost of living. It's getting more expensive. 7%, 10%, we're talking, in, as we mentioned, someone even flagged, they don't even deserve to be on a council to flag a 100% rise in business rates in a council. Are you kidding me? These are the types of councils that require reform. This is the significant piece of work that's required to be done. And I think this goes in parallel. I think the city of Adelaide has a different proposition that needs to be considered. We have a capital city committee, we have a city of Adelaide Act, and I think we need to have a seat at the table to work out how future councils do not increase rates beyond of what a CPI or a little bit over is. If there is a crisis board there, federals come in, state come in, they help councils. This is not an agenda at which dictatorship takes over. And it's about watching the fall of the local government community. That is not the intention of rate capping. This is about passing on a minute little response. It's about councils being more effective, more efficient, more business savvy, more open-minded to innovation so they can reduce the impost on their rate base. This is what we're able to achieve here. We've done it through the magic of this chamber. Other councils haven't done that. The easiest thing for a council to do is to raise the rate on a dollar. This is like walking into a supermarket, losing customers every single day, and all they keep doing is increasing the price of milk. And what that does is drive customers out. That's what it does. So I think this motion has merit. I think no one should ever have to increase council rates outside reasonable. And I think if councils require help, they should speak to the state government about it. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. So, members, do I have any further debate on this matter who have not already spoke would like to ask a question? Question. Councillor Martin, question? Thank you, Lord Mayor. If, if this matter is taken in parts, as has been proposed by Councillor Abbott, um, and only the second point is approved, what is the position or uh, what is it that you would take to a table on the development of legislation to restrict rates? <laughs> what, what, what exactly would we be approving? You would be approving for the Lord Mayor Councillor to collaborate with the state, with the responsible minister, and to bring that position back to you, the way I read that. Now, hang on, when you say that you would collaborate in putting together a policy for rate capping, or you would just collaborate to get a position to bring back the council? Well, the last three words are fairly operative also, to restrict rate rises. So there is commonality between point one and point two in that regard, to restrict rate rises. So it doesn't mean that I would be going in, if part two of this motion got up, I wouldn't be going in with a unrestricted, so to speak, because that would be the antithesis of what you just agreed, unrestricted approach towards rates in the future. So I'd have to go in with a lens, a practical lens of, we note, government, that you've clearly stated that you have a rate capping policy. As the Capital City Council in South Australia, we'd like to be at the table to collaborate with you on it. What precisely are you looking to achieve? I'd have to exercise good judgment and I need to bring that back to you. That's how I interpret that second part of the motion. So look, I, I, and it's a, it's a really fine point. So you wouldn't be sitting at the table saying, I'm here because I support rate capping. You'd be sitting there saying, rate capping is on your agenda, but I want to talk to you about it. Uh, point one of the motion is probably more overt with regards to supporting rate capping. Yeah, no, I'm asking point, point one is not there. Correct, if point two, uh, it would be considerably more subtle, for want of a better word. Uh, um, there is still the lens of the last three words to restrict rate rises that is still there and that is a commonality between point one and point two but I would not be going in saying city council opposes rate capping because I can't because I don't have that information from you. Uh, no, I understand, but are you asking... No, no, it's important, Councillor Moran. It's important to understand. I'll allow these questions, Councillor Moran. So when you sit at that table with the minister then, you will not be saying I am here because I support or my council supports rate capping. Not on that second part of the motion. 
Thank you. Now, members, do I have any further debate before Councillor Moran sums up? Can I ask a question? Yes, you can, Councillor Rabia. Maybe Councillor Perrin can answer this, uh, if Edmund can't. Um, there's a mention of 50 councils that supported this. Did these councils consult their ratepayers on increasing or not capping their rate rises? Do we have any information on that? I need to refer that to the CEO. CEO, be able to answer that question? On that rate capping position, did these councils consult their ratepayers to say, hey, are you cool with a rate rise or not a rate rise? Someone asked that question? Through you, Lord Mayor, look, I'm not aware of individual council processes. Um, um, I would be surprised if councils did go out and consult specifically on that topic. Um, I would have presumed that council lawyers, acting as leaders of their communities, uh, represented their best interests. Thank you, CEO. So, members, I have no further hands. I'm going to put you back to the mover of this motion to sum up, and then we will vote on this motion in two parts, part one followed by part two. Councillor Moran. In summing up, um, to Councillor Hinder, I too don't agree with um, the philosophy of holders, bowlers, other levels of government interfering in um, in the workings of, of the lower, you know, another level. However, I don't think we need to stick our heads in the sand to say that every time we look around, a local government is tripping over itself. <coughs> We haven't. We've got this this um, ship sailing well with our rate uh, with our rates. It took a bit of doing, but we got it. We got it there, and now we've set a trend. But other other councils aren't doing that. I know that Sue will say they're all wonderful and they do this, and she's on the LGA, and who gave her permission to say that we supported rate rate didn't support rate capping. We certainly didn't form a position here. We never do because we're so disinterested in the LGA meetings. We never form any positions. Um, so I agree with uh, Councillor Henry, but I think this is a serious thing. I think other councils are not running their um, running their finance as well. So while I philosophically disagree at degree uh, disagree with um, the state government interfering to any extent, um, I'm very aware of why they're doing it, and I can see it. And as a, as a as a taxpayer, I agree with it. Um, to Sandy Wilkinson's point. Um, I, the LGA was silent on planning. Now we have an opportunity now to get to have a good dialogue and to answer your questions, pick our battles. I agree with rate capping. Um, it is political. Um, this room is pretty much voting down political lines tonight. But um, I agree with rate capping. I don't agree with what the last government did with our planning. If we wage war on this government over something we cannot win and line up with an organisation like the LGA, we will slam the door on any friendly relations we have with them forever. The, I, I too want planning to be changed and I want the things that the Labor government took away from us back. And I agree with the Liberal government saying that the councils need to rate cap. They do. We don't, but they do. You just look at Burnside and Uncle Brigham's name but two. But the number of, as I said, the number of calls I had from ratepayers and other councils and councils themselves that said, and excuse me, the administration and their council is out of control and they are for they, they have not got the power to take the, the rates brains back. Hence rate capping came up. Don't pick a fight with them on this because we, we basically agree with them. Um, let's, let's look at what we can get back. Let's try and not repeat the sins of the past where we had 16 years of just butt, butting heads and losing lots of things. Let's try to get them back. Rate, out of control rates has gone. This government will control them. So uh, the seat at the table, it's easy to take, the government's table, Sue. That's the seat we need at, not the damn at LGA and Phil, perhaps when you pay rates, you might in the city of Adelaide, you might know how much they are. Who <laughs> doesn't pay rates? Members? Uh, what may I pay rates? I pay rates. They're excessive too. I know you pay rates, Councillor Martin. Uh, members, I will now put item one to you. So please read that before you vote on it, members. Item one of this matter, I put this before you. Those in favour? Item one. Those against? Division. All those members in favour, please rise. Councillor Milani, Councillor Abiad, Councillor Slama, Councillor Moran.
Okay, remember, so item one fails. I take you to item two. Those in favour? Those against? Item two carries. All those members in favour, please arise. Councillor Milani, Councillor Wilkinson, Councillor Aviad, Councillor Hender, Councillor Slama, Councillor Martin, and Councillor Moran. Members, thank you for your deliberation. That was the debate that you always had to have. <laughs> Members, I will now take you on to Councillor uh, Item 15.3, Councillor Martin, motion on notice regarding member meeting attendances, page 77 of your papers. Councillor Martin. Um, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, it's just straightforward. I simply uh, seek to compliment the system you introduced uh, last year, which was to inform ratepayers of uh, meeting attendance in the interests of accountability. Um, it will allow for reporting of the duration of meetings, and I think that will be informative, not least because uh, I'm not sure our constituents know the hours. So, uh, are you moving your motion is printed clearly? So, I'll just find a second before oh, you, please, sorry. before you yeah. continue the debate. Members, I look to you. No, Councillor Clarehan, Councillor Martin, back to you. I think Councillor Martin, George, George yours. Moran just said, Jesus Christ, Sue, why? why still going to do do Councillor Martin, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, it will allow for reporting of the duration of meetings, and I think that will be informative because uh, our constituents don't often understand the number of meetings and the duration of those meetings, um, but also the length of time that meetings are attended by councillors. As uh, one ratepayer put it, uh, to me this week, um, you blokes just go and attend the meeting and then tick off after 10 minutes. And that's not the case. I know that our, our elected members work very hard and attend uh, long hours at meetings, and therefore this will demonstrate to our ratepayers what uh, attendance uh, is being achieved. So I I'm looking forward to the members adopting this. Um, it, it is something that's difficult to argue against, but I'm happy to listen to any arguments uh, against it here this evening, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Clearahan, you second the member before I go to other speakers. Would you care to speak to it? Reserving your right, and we do have Councillor Abiyad, followed by Councillor Hendo. Councillor Abiyad. I move the motion to be put, Lord Mayor. I need a seconder for that to happen, members. Councillor Moran. So, members, I'm going to put this motion. No discussion. I understand. So, members, I'll first put this to you. You need to vote on whether we're going to put the motion. Those in favour of putting the motion? Can I see your hands, please, members? Those? Put the motion. Sorry, members, I'm just going to take procedural advice. Please bear with me. Okay, members, we are voting on whether to put the motion. I put this before you. Hands up. Those in favour? Those against? Members, did I have all members vote on that matter? Okay, 5 4. Okay, so it was carried. I'm now going to put the motion. So, members, those in favour? Those against? Okay, the matter is lost. All those members in favour of the motion, please rise. Councillor Wilkinson, Councillor Martin, Councillor Clarahan. Members, thank you. Item lost. Members, I now take you to item 15.4. Councillor Hender, motion and notice to revoke part four of the meeting held on the 12th of December and the decision made of the Council on regarding on street parking policy and expiations, which is page 78. So, members, what we will need to do with regards to this matter is your first decision will be to move a motion to revoke. So, this will be done in two parts in that regard. So, Councillor Hendra, I look to you. So, I put the motion as printed and seek a seconder. Mm -hmm. oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so moved by Councillor Hender, seconded by Councillor Clarehan. You'd like to speak to the motion to revoke. The floor is yours, Councillor Hender. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, it's, a it's a complicated motion, so if I can just um, take you through it. There are two parts. One is to rescind some changed parking arrangements. We voted that we would bring in 
um, on the 1st of July. So um, these are parking arrangements that we haven't yet brought in. And the other is if we, if you agree with that, th sorry, those changed parking arrangements put a $1.5 million hole in our budget. Sorry, that's perhaps a bit unfair. But they they um, forego $1.5 million worth of um, revenue. And um, so that's my first motion. I'll explain that in a minute, first part of the motion. The second part is if you agree with that, is that we apply that money, um, that we put that money back in so that it can become part of the budget and particularly that we give some consideration to how we might apply that for small businesses in the city. So let me explain the first one. We voted to change our arrangements, our parking arrangements. Um, so the current, current parking arrangements, the arrangements as they stand today are that if someone comes into the city and we put a ticket on their car, if they don't pay, we send them a letter with a late payment fee and we receive some income from, from that process. The changed arrangements are that we will um, put a ticket on their car. If they don't pay, we send them a letter and then we send them another letter with a letter fee and, uh, and then we take them to court, presumably. Now, the reason that I think we ought to reconsider that proposed change is that we now have smart parking. At the time when we voted for that, smart parking was not in place. But now what we've got is a process, and, we've and to Councillor Moran's point, we've invested a lot of time and a lot of energy and indeed a lot of money into providing the opportunity for our parkers to park in a way that's compliant with our, with our, um, uh, with our rules. Um, that gives the people the right to park, it gives them an opportunity to, um, to extend their parking if they want to, and they get notified if they're about to receive a parking ticket or, and they get sent a, um, a notification through their phone saying, please extend. We also know, and obviously this is a secret, that there's a sort of small moment of grace even after that happens, so there's a grace period. And then we send them, uh, then we put a ticket on their car. Uh, and if they don't, if they say they haven't got that... Um, subtle councillor over here. <laughs> if they do. <laughs> And uh, if, they, if they say they haven't um, got that ticket, then um, we, we take that into account. And if they say it wasn't on their car, we, they can ring us up and say it wasn't on their car and we take that into account. So we're now giving, we're giving our, our um, parkers every opportunity to get this right. And, um, and I think that, uh, that given that we do that, I don't think we need to invest another $1.5 million in those people who get it wrong. Um, so, I guess what I'm proposing, I think the choice is this. You can either vote against the rescission. Okay, so that's your three minutes. And I wonder if I can have a few more. Members, yes, you have comfort. Please continue. I think you can vote against the rescission. You can forego $1.5 million of our budget. And that money goes to support people who, first of all, overstay their parking, despite the fact we give them every opportunity not to, and don't pay their parking fines. That $1.5 million supports people who overstay their parking and don't pay their parking fines. Or you can vote for the rescission and you can take that $1.5 million and you can apply it in our budget to support our traders, our ratepayers, our small business owners, our voters. You can apply that money in a way that's constructive within the city. And that's what I'm asking you to do. Thank you, Councillor Henderson. So, members, before I look to Councillor Clarehan, who is your seconder, oh, just okay. reminding you, members, that you are looking to revoke not the entire decision from the 12th of December 2017, but 0.4 of it, which is highlighted in bold in your papers. Right, Reserving your right. Councillor Abiyad. Thank uh, Look, initially, um, I wasn't very supportive of this, but um, I, I will support Councillor Hender. Um, uh, for her motion and, uh, and her push. And I think what tipped me over the line is two things, mainly the smart parking exercise. I think we could really do more with that to be able to assist uh, some of the people that genuinely have not seen their fine or want an opportunity to potentially extend, uh, which I think is fair. I think technology is going to assist us with that. Um, but um, also the other thing I wanted to say before I do to ask a question, um, obviously, the smart parking system will have an impact on this as well from a budgetary perspective because currently I'm assuming the administration is picking up the $1.5 million 
through an assumption that you have to remind people that haven't paid their infringements with a reminder fee, but if they're starting to extend through smart parking technology, have we modelled what that projection could potentially look like? Because that would potentially also reduce um, the $1.5 million reminder fee. That's the first question. Thank you, Councillor. Let's see. Uh, Steve, can you help us with that? Through you, Lord Yeah, it was in the report in relation to smart parking, there was an anticipated, it is really a broad estimate, but it was anticipated at potentially 40,000. Oh, that's, yeah, and that's to be um, monitored through next year and to identify what that real impact is. So I guess we're not going to know until we really roll, roll this out. So I think if we're going to apply this, maybe we need to apply it at another stage, but I would please ask our administration that people that write to you that you feel 100% have not received the parking ticket on their car or there's a fundamental issue, whatever, that we exercise some type of leniency through our approach to the system. Um, this was the intent of this motion, is to not be uh, belligerent and hit people hard when they're visiting the city, to spend money at our shops and support our communities. So if we're going to take this out and we're going to put back the $1.5 million on the budget with a reminder fee, we need to be a little bit more lenient and we need to be a bit more supportive and understanding of what people are so, otherwise, I'm happy to support uh, the motion this morning. Thank you, Councillor. I've got Councillor Moran followed by Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Moran. Look, I'm happy to um, support it too, as long as the 1.5 goes back into parking initiatives. Um, I, I do wonder how on earth a letter, could we have some, after this meeting, some breakdown of why one letter, which would be a form letter, could cost that much money? Same bit of it, Councillor Moran. Okay. <laughs> so it, it just blows me away that, that 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 I need some sort of confirmation as to why that that, that one letter costs so much. Because let's say so we're standing here arguing and it costs five hundred thousand, we probably wouldn't get rid of it. So I need some really sure data that that is absolutely correct. If it is correct, I'm assuming it is. Um, yes, I'm happy to see what the new smart parking does, and um, I echo Hassam's um, uh, sentiments that we, we really err strongly on the side of leniency, because this is the direction we're trying to go. So to, uh, to get rid of a letter that's forming a, fu a, a kind function of reminding people to pay a fine um, is, a, is a pretty big step. So I think we have to match that with, with other things. Um, and I'm also hoping soon that the um, Lord Mayor will uh, start dialogue with the state government to see, see what's happened with the legislation to hand us back the power to set our own parking fees. I think that will take a lot of uh, the pressure off um, the angst and the suffering that people have through parking fines, which are just way too high now and accelerate way too quickly. But I'm happy to um, trust that, that our new parking system will balance the removal of this, this letter. If it doesn't, I think we'll bring it back. Thank you, Councillor Brown. Councillor Wilkinson. Um, yes, I actually put that question to Councillor Hender and um, uh, she advised me that from the administration that the, that the reason for the cost is because when a parking inspector puts a ticket on the windscreen, they don't need to find out where the person lives, they just issue the thing and go on to the windscreen. But to send a letter, there's a cost for, through the state government at least we then, to get the address in order to send the letter. But what my question query is, is in terms of whether the cost is really 1.5, when we send the next letter, that is the fine, aren't we incurring that cost already? So if we're already, there's two letters going out and we're already um, incurring that cost. So, hmm, but I'm just curious as to what ratio. Vanessa Godden is joining us members and should you care to direct a question to Vanessa? I'm sure she's very keen to answer it. <laughs> Councillor, are you still debating? Uh, no, we'll take that as a question, Vanessa. Uh, through the chair, um, the the one point five million dollars that's quoted associated with what was option three or part four um, in the council report is made up of two things. So one is costs 
um, associated with administering that request, which equate to about $266,000. And the costs associated are um, the search fees that we um, incur when we have to um, ask DIPTI for people's registration details in order to send them the letter. Um, when we send those with a reminder fee, they can be recouped. They can't be recouped when you're sending those with a courtesy letter. So they're, costs, they're additional costs to the way we currently do business today. Um, and the rest of the $1.5 million is actually foregone revenue um, with those reminder fees. So the letter itself is not cost, it's not costs just associated with sending the letter, it's costs associated with the whole process. That okay, members, that inform your debate. I'm going to keep us moving. Councillor Wilkinson, thank you for your question. I now look to count. Do you have another question? Yes, you can. Um, it's tricky. It's the same, typically, the same cars that you know are coming in and using the city. Is the council not able to retain a database of of the, uh, the, the uh, you know, previous thing, or do we have to do a fresh search every time? Even though we've, our system would say that license plate number XV1562 has previously been finished. Uh, through the Lord Mayor, my understanding is we have to do that search every time, so we're not. And entitled to keep that information legally at this point in time. Okay, just following the answer to those questions, that, that answer about the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the the actual cost is of the administration is only a quarter of a million. That's not much in council budget terms, so it's more about the forgone revenue. That's where we're getting the bad luck. People may or may not choose to shop in the city, so uh, that does change it for me. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Martin, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, let's uh, go back to December when we agreed on these changes. Uh, what we agreed to give people was an extension in the period uh, by which they had to pay their fines. It went from four weeks to six weeks. What I proposed as an amendment and what was adopted by the Council was that at a period in between, probably at about four weeks, a courtesy letter would be sent to the person who incurred the fine to say, hey, you've probably forgotten to pay this or maybe you can't contact us or pay the fine. That was our customer friendly focus. And the cost of that, according to the administration, is $266,000. Now, those measures were designed to create goodwill in the community in Adelaide, to encourage people to feel good about coming to the city, not thinking, oh God, I'm going to get a parking ticket. Now, the stuff about the smart parking is just, is tosh a bad word? I think it's a bad word. It's, it's just tosh. There are 2,800 2, smart parking spaces coming to the city of Adelaide. The administration's estimate is that there will be a 30% take up in five years. That is six to 700 car spaces. Its impact is minimal. North Adelaide alone has 6,000 on street car parks. There is just no role for smart parking in this. This is actually about stopping the misery that we inflict on people every year because they put the parking ticket in the bottom drawer, they've forgotten or they can't pay it because the electricity or the, the rates or whatever, probably the rates, the rates are coming. They just can't afford it. Not in the City of Adelaide, Councillor. <laughs> well, they're still substantial, Lord Mayor, and I can show you my rate notice too. Cool. Now, the problem is that this amount of $1.5 million is made up of $1.3 million in fines, in misery, to people who can't afford or who forget to pay. And so what we're being asked to do is to say, we're going to inflict that misery on these people and somehow that's going to be good for the city, good for businesses, good for the council's reputation. It is tosh. This is a measure that's designed to restore to the administration income that we agreed we would forego 
in the interests of encouraging a better regard to parking. You can't be compassionate about people. You can't say things like, you know, we're no longer punitive unless you reject this rescission motion. This, this is really a retrograde step. And if ever there was a night to say no to a rescission motion, it is tonight. Councillor Martin, thank you. Councillor Slava, floor is yours. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I won't be supporting the rescinding either. Um, and it's because the core of the existing motion, in my opinion, challenged the, the culture of our organisation, challenged our brand, more or less. Now, that's what I like about it. There's an opportunity for us to have another conversation with the customer and without talking about everything that Phil just mentioned is exactly what is on my mind. And that's why I liked it and voted for it in the beginning. Um, public perception, goodwill. I thought we made a good, solid step forward to, to finally getting through on this. This All this worry is about is putting money back in the bank. I'd, I'd make a suggestion, why don't we look at optimising what we do digitally with the way we send it out, with the way we, you know, the administration operates, rather than putting the cost factor on and saying we need $1.5 million with it. This doesn't really fix the problem. This makes it bigger. So I look at the banks, look at an SMS to say a credit card payment is due in, in seven days. It's a friendly reminder. They never used to do that, but they've listened to public opinion. They've listened to a customer-centric focus and decided that a, 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 a notice seven days before the payment is due is, is a good reminder. It's a contact opportunity with the customer. It's an opportunity market to the customer. It's an opportunity in our, opportunity in our city to, to implant goodwill. And by rescinding this, we're just saying, no, not important to us. But it is important to me, so I can't support it. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Corbell Moore. Thank you. Um, look, if I recall, we did discuss this at length, and uh, I can't remember whether it was unanimous, but I do remember that there was strong support in favour of this at the time. And let's face it, fires are very expensive as is. And if you get that reminder notice, um, it's going to prevent you from getting your fine in rapidly increasing. I think it's well worth the money spent, and that was the decision that this council made. I'm happy to stick to it. Uh, I just think if we add up the cost of people getting a fine increasing rapidly, whether it's once or twice or three times, um, it could it could be that that negative experience prevents them from coming into the city. And what's the cost of that? We're not measuring that. So the cost that you're looking to save is actually potentially not worth it, considering the, the value that we're get, getting with our existing decision that we've made. Thank you, Councillor Corbell. More Councillor Malani. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Can I just ask a question? I'm a bit confused. Can we just go through the numbers? Because um, what, what, we talk about 1.5 million, we talk about 266,000, um, we talk about the fact that we might, people will get, there'll be less expiations because of the extension, but that's only in some kind of, that's only in trial period for a certain number of car parks. What, what are the numbers? See ya. Yes. Um, through the Lord Mayor, so the cost associated with adopting this option would be approximately $266,000. Um, the remainder is foregone, well, is our estimated foregone reminder fees. So if we're um, giving people the opportunity to pay the expiation on time, at the moment we collect reminder fees associated with that, which is the amount legislated by the government for late payment. Um, and we have modelled the um, dollar figures for this option based on on the income we receive from those reminder fees now. So 266 could potentially decrease as a cost as we decrease the number of expiations potentially with smart parking. There'll be less of them. Potentially, that's right. And just to clarify, we can only send a letter. That's our only option. I mean, Councillor Slammer mentioned that you know banks send out SMSs because they've got our details. We don't have that luxury. We can only send a letter. Through the chair, that's right, because at the moment we need to send it to the registration, the, the vehicle registration, and the only way we can do that is by 
um, obtaining those details from Dipti and then sending uh, sending a letter. Now, members, I'll speak to this matter briefly before I hand you. I don't see any further hands, so before I hand you back to your movement. Um, members, if I was personally voting on this matter, I probably wouldn't be. Um, I wouldn't be voting for it. And I mean that predicated on time. Um, we're yet to implement smart parking. We're yet to measure its full impact in terms of its effectiveness in terms of parking turnover, uh, expiation reductions, revenues to council, city visitations, economic benefit to small business, you name it. Now, I hope all of that's exciting, members. Um, but my own view is it would be premature to revoke this matter until which time we had data. So maybe it's 12 months premature. That would be my own personal view. I now take you back to the mover. <laughs> Councillor Hendon. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I did think about the timing. And the reason that it's come before you tonight is because we really need to make this decision in readiness for the budget, obviously. And we're about to get our budget back from consultation. This is relevant to the budget considerations. Uh, and it's also because we have, actually haven't implemented this action yet. And so uh, rather than implement it and then make a change back to our original position, uh, I, what I was seeking to do was to stop the implementation. Uh, look, I respect councillors' views about this, but I do still think that there is a real balancing act. What we're saying is we can, we can, we can apply the income or potential income to two possible groups of people. The first is we can forego the income and we can give our support to the tune of $1.5 million and that's what the administration tell us it's going to tell us it is. And that, as you know, is made up of the amount of money it costs us to get the details from duty which we can't recover from them because we're not paid, uh, charging a late payment fee, plus the foregone late payment fee, which is, you know, how it, so it's revenue. So we can apply that we can forego the revenue and we can reward people who come into our city and who overstay their parts and then don't pay their tickets within the 28, the generous 28 days that we give them to pay. So we can apply the money to those people and I understand that some people do want to do that because they want to send a message to people that you're welcome in our city. And yeah, I also want to send a message to people who are welcome in our city. But I have to balance that up against the other people who I would like to benefit from the revenue that might come from that. We could apply that money, not to the parkers who come in and disrespect our city in that way. We could apply that $1.5 million to our small business owners, to our rate payers, to the people who drive the city's economic benefit. <laughs> That's where we could apply that money. And I see there being a real benefit of doing that. Um, so it's a balancing act. I, I totally understand it's a balancing act. For me, I tip on the favour of the people who pay their rates, who drive this city, <laughs> and who, who are the backbone of what we do. It's the matter for you. So, Emma, you have a motion to revoke or rescission motion before you. We vote on that now. I put this before you. Those in favour of the rescission? Those against the rescission? So the move to, re uh, for, to revoke fails. All those members in favour, please rise. <coughs> Councillor Milani, Councillor Abio, Councillor Hender and Councillor Clarahan. Thank you, members. Motion fails. So we won't proceed to the second part on that basis. So, members, I will now take you to item 15.5, which is a motion I noticed from Councillor Wilkinson. It's detailed on page 80 of your papers regarding planning and development initiatives. Councillor Wilkinson, the floor is yours. You have a seconder in Councillor Aviard, so you may con Thank you. commence debating. Uh, yes, further to my visit to Sydney, when I was there on a historic houses uh, conference, I had the opportunity to look at Sydney CBD as I spoke last time. Just to recap, some it's often said in Adelaide that you know Adelaide needs to come of age and grow up and learn from other cities. Well, you know, Sydney is is the city that is often looked to as well as Melbourne. And there in the city of Sydney, you know, walking around it, you could see how good the city looked because they had their tall development set back. They had their mire was behind an old facade. 
it's timeless as opposed to the Adelaide Mire where they demolished the old facade and now we have a very dated 1980s two-tone green glass building. Um, the Ibis Hotel, where a beautiful building on the corner of Twin Street, which we have tried to heritage list, was demolished. The Ibis Hotel in Sydney is behind a uh, retained building. The Intercontinental Hotel, which is anonymous concrete tilt up thing in Adelaide, in Sydney is integrated and contained within a historic building. The Uni Lodge accommodation, which looks mighty appalling on um, the, the, the historic building next to where Parliamento's was, was demolished for Uni Lodge there. Uh, that could have been incorporated. In Sydney, the Uni Lodge is retained uh, a historic site just like we could have there. Um, the, uh, and, and what changed with that example was the plot ratio of that, that site was seven. But when we removed plot ratio, then that, that the negotiation thing went out the window. And buildings on the south side of Grenfell Street, even though they weren't listed, they were actually retained because there was still plot ratio. So the council planners actually had leverage and say, well, we'll let you go to a plot ratio of effectively eight if you keep that building. But now, with no plot ratio, there's no leverage in negotiations. And uh, with, a, with a, only a, a small proportion of our actual historic buildings actually listed, we see them go where people just want to build to the maximum site. And then there's no opportunity for a transferable floor area. We had it, but we in Sydney, they still have it, and it works really well. So, you know, there's a lot of good lessons that we can learn from Sydney. Um, and uh, so I think this will be a valuable, valuable piece of work. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Abiyad, do you second it? Is that right? Members, I look to you. Comments, debate? Councillor Corbell Moore. Just that I support it and I think it's really good. I often look around at the city's um, buildings which have been built over the years in replacing historic beauties and wish that more buildings had retained their heritage facade. Um, and these are some of the examples that you've provided us with. So anything to help us retain our heritage um, while we still maintain development is a win and I'm happy to support it. Thank you, Councillor. Members, any further debate? Councillor Robbiard? Thank Co you. Councillor Wilkinson. Just in, in summing up, the um, uh, I think the measure of how well a city does its planning is looking at a McDonald's and looking at signage patrols. And it, you, there's a picture there of my attachment of the McDonald's in George Street, Sydney, and it looks very classy when you compare it to the tawdry looking signage and stuff like that we often get in Adelaide. It's just a good, a good measure and a good example. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. I put this matter before you, members. Those in favour? Those against? Item carried. Members, we have four matters which you'll now be debating in confidence. And before we do proceed with those matters, can I extend an invitation to Mayor Johnson if you'd like to join us for dinner uh, in the Queen Adelaide room post our debate for these four matters? You're very welcome to join us, Mayor. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Thank you for joining us in the Council Chamber. Members, I now take you to, before we do exclude, motions without notice. Do I have any? Motions without notice? I don't. So, members, I take you now to your exclusions. We have four items for which we'll exclude. 18.1.1 New Park Business Initiative. Can I have a mover to move that matter into conference? Moved by Councillor Wilkinson, seconded by Councillor Slama. No debate. Those in favour? Those against, 18.1.1 moves into confidence. 18.1.2, Q3 Commercial and Business Operations Report, moved by Councillor Slava, seconded by Councillor Clearahan. No debate. I put that before you. Those in favour? Those against? We move that item into confidence. 18.1.3, Strategic Procurement Award, moved by Councillor Clearahan, seconded by Councillor Moran. No debate. I put that before you. Those in favour? Those against, that matter goes into confidence. 18.1.4, quarterly confidential council decisions. Can I have a mover for confidence? Councillor Milani, seconded by. Councillor Slama, no debate. I put that before you, members. Those, are, those four, those against. So we carry. We now have four items in confidence. If we could cease the recording device and any persons not directly associated with the debate of these items, could I kindly?
Morning Vice is back on and I will formally close the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, members, I formally close this meeting at 8.31 p.m. on Tuesday the 22nd of May. I thank you for your participation. CEO, thank you to you and your team. Meeting closed.